Hey, YouTube, how you guys doing today? My beard is great. My name is Trey. Today, I have a very, very special guest for you guys. All right. She goes by the name of Sierra, the IT girl. Right. And you check her out on YouTube. Right. I'm going to leave a link to her YouTube page. But today we're going to talk about how to accelerate through WGU. Sierra is going to give us a little bit of her story. So just kick back, relax for all my accelerators, motivators and procrastinators out there. All right. Just tune in. We hope that you get some value out of this discussion today. Sierra, how are you doing today? I'm doing so good, Trey. Thank you for having me on the show. Hey, I appreciate you so much. No, hey, if you don't mind, could you please tell us a little bit about yourself real quickly? And how definitely. You got, and kind of how you got started in IT. Yeah, definitely. So uh, my name is Sierra, also known as IT Girl, just like you said. And I basically got started in IT uh, really weirdly. I had no technical no technical experience, nothing to do with technology at all. I started out in entertainment and was there for quite a while. And basically, I played a lot of Sims growing up. That was my my foray into anything computer related. Um, killed a lot of Sims, actually. That was like, you know, the thing you do with Sims. But then I, when the pandemic hit, decided to take a happiness course because, you know, it was just so weird and you had so much time on your hands. And so I thought, let me just do something that's kind of productive with, with my time. And I took this happiness course and I had to take an aptitude test during the course, so I took that and it said, hey, you know, you you might be good at programming. Like, you, you might wanna look into that. Software development might be a thing for you. And I thought, okay, interesting, interesting choice. Um, but decided to follow through with it. And, and I next took the CS50 Harvard course that they were offering for free as well. Um, I took that and really, really enjoyed it. They were working with, C, I think they were just working with C, basically, just basic C. and. Um, Everything I thought was so interesting, you know, we learned about binary, we learned about all the basic things, and I just thought, oh, I actually would be very interested in this. So I did a little more research, and I ended up on the WGU website, and I mentioned it to my stepdad, and he was like, that's a really good school. He said that it's, you, you, you know, it's very affordable, a lot of people go there, a lot of people rave about it, I've heard nothing but good things. And I said, okay, all right, um, if you say it's good, then I'll check it out, and I checked it out fell in love and here we are. So what did you like most uh, before we get into the acceleration process? So what did you like most like after you, you know, went ahead and applied and everything? What did you like most about WGU? Like what attracted you to that uh, the school and the program once you got started? The people, 100% the people. Um, I had an enrollment counselor. I, I want to say her name because I want to give her kudos, but at the same time, you know, I don't want to dox her like that or anything. So, but she was wonderful and she was just so personable and um just she seemed you know she seemed like she cared about what she was doing and how she was helping people so i really enjoyed that aspect of just working with her to get into the school and how i didn't feel like i was just another number i didn't feel like i was just there to make the school look good or just you know make their quota make get them some money um so she really really was the main person that helped me really feel like this was the right choice for me and the fact that you could accelerate like that was a huge a huge bonus for me because i like to do things kind of quickly um so that and like i said the people in general and ever since i've been at the school all the people have been amazing all right hey so let's talk about um the acceleration so like how many classes did you start off with like when you first um enrolled and everything when i first enrolled i mandatorily i think you start off with the one class i think it's just the uh what's it called like training intro class what's that it's like a, a well, zero it's like intro to it hey just for the record right so uh, sierra has already graduated for the people out there right so me and sierra are both wgu alumni right alumni so <laughs> uh, but just but just it, so it was a while ago and, and i definitely know what it's like to remember things but i know the first class they set you up with is intro to it you know they want to kind of gauge your overall knowledge of the uh, general concepts within it so that's what it is intro to it that, okay, yeah, so I so I started with that one, and then um, I think he, uh, my mentor at the time was like, oh, maybe start with like three classes. So I might have started with like three after that, so three total. And then I finished those, uh, I think within like three days, because they were all pretty simple. So he was like, all right, I see you. Um, here's another like three, and you can, he was like, you know, do, do what you can, do what you feel, whatever. And so from there, I just kind of, I just kind of kept going at just like 
every th- I'd get another three every time I just finished those three. All right. So, hey, look, you got you got uh, those three courses knocked out. Then your uh, program mentor gave you another three courses. What was like your strategy for how to uh, tackle and approach those courses to knock them out as quickly as you did? Um, so I don't know that I initially I don't think I had a strategy if, in the very beginning. I think I just was excited to be there. <laughs> I was just like, I'm, I'm here. This is cool. You know, I'm learning tech stuff. So initially I didn't have a strategy. Um, but once I kind of started getting in the stream of things, I made myself a schedule like I considered this to be a job. You know, there wasn't much going on in the pandemic for me. So I had my days essentially quite open. So I, I made a schedule that started as soon as I woke up up until whenever I decided my day was going to be over. Typically that was about six o'clock, like 5.30 to six o'clock. Um, and I just followed that schedule every single day for six months. For the first six months, I absolutely did that whole thing all the time. Yeah. So I know like you mentioned uh, the excitement. Right. And I know that's one of the things that gets you because like when you first, you know, joined WGU and I I can't speak for everyone, but I can just speak for Trey. Right. I remember, you know, being so excited because I saw I saw a guy on YouTube. His name was Cold Bueno. Right. I'm going to mention him every time because that's how Trey got through WGU, this Cold Bueno guy on YouTube. And this dude was like doing like seven classes every three days. And I was like, man, like I don't know if I can knock it out like that, but man, if he can do it, I can do it. Like, you know what I'm saying? The excitement mm-hmm. is very, very, you know, rich for people. So that's why I encourage uh, people tremendously to check out, you know, those sites like a WGU Facebook page and the Reddit pages and all these forums, you know, so you can see other people doing it to keep you encouraged to push you across the finish line. Yeah, I agree with you. I don't know. I also watched a guy. I don't remember what his name is, though. It might be Code Bueno. If it was the guy who like did everything in six months and then he I think he took out an extended month at the very end so he could finish everything in seven months. Yes, I watched him. that guy. as That's him? Yeah. Cold I watched Wayne. him, too. And I, was, I know him yes. by his name. <laughs> you do. I was like, I like I watched that guy and I was like, holy crap, like, look this guy go. I want to I want to be on his level. Um, so I agree. Like you watch him and it's just like, OK, I got this. You know, he can do it. I can do it. So I was on that page, too. Right. So after, like, say, after the excitement wear it off, right, did you hone in on any particular strategies? Like after, like, let's say seventh or eighth or ninth course, you was like, hey, you know what? I think if I approach it this way, you know, so I can still streamline it and, and do knock out things fairly quickly. Did you come across any thoughts like that or no? I basically just stuck with my daily routine. So, like I said, I kind of, yeah, the schedule that I had set up. So it was um, I was also doing a web boot camp at the time. I um, I had mentioned this web boot camp in my my videos before called Angela Yu's Web Development Boot Camp. So in the mornings, I would do her boot camp from about nine nine a.m. to roughly uh, I believe noon nine to noon is what I was doing, and then I'd take a lunch, and then I would go back in and I'd do all my W WGU work from one till about like I said five thirty six o'clock. So that in that time span, I was like just do all of the work that you can take, take all the information that you can. If you can finish, you know, a textbook or whatever it is that you're supposed to be learning at this time, maybe it's the video course, whatever it was, just try and do as much as you can in that time span and, you know, memorize it. And then tomorrow we'll pick up where we left off. And, you know, if we can, whatever we can get done in that time, we'll just try and get done. Well, like what, what what is what is your actual degree plan like what what did you um how, what what did you uh graduate with uh so i graduated with a bs of software development and my degree plan i had you know i had such a cool mentor like i'm not even like my, my mentor was was top notch he was a plus and um he really listened to me when i came to school like i it all the people i had were really really great and um we talked and I let him know like how I work as a person and he was he was so cool and he kind of let me know how he works and like what we could do and how the school could work for me. Um, so we just decided like instead of him, you know, constantly calling me and everything like that, because some, you know, that's annoying for some people. So we decided like, hey, if I need something, I can just let him know. And basically all I needed for most of the times with him was for him to add on more classes. So I was like, <laughs> give me more, give me more. And um, that was my plan was just to stay in contact with him, let him know what I needed and uh, make it work like that. When unfortunately he did leave the school, which happened right after that first term that I had. 
um, I got a new mentor, which which didn't really work for me. But uh, then after that, I did request a new mentor. So my final mentor was another one who was like amazing, and he really, really understood me as well. So we actually worked out a final plan because this is by the time that I had gotten into the courses where I needed to do a lot more coding, and um, we worked out a plan where I would pre game like I, I pre scheduled a lot of my my course instructor meetings because I needed help to kind of just understand things like static and um, you know different little like tech technical things because reading is different than putting things into practice so I highly recommend people pre-schedule these things because instructors get busy and then you're bouncing around to a lot of different instructors and it makes things kind of more difficult to learn because you're learning more horizontally than vertically um, but once I did that then I you know got to just get through those last couple of courses and everything was great. So I, I think just constant communication with the people who you need to communicate with was a huge part of getting through stuff pretty quickly. And then also knowing how you work just as a person, because I know that I'm more visual. So I looked at a lot of uh, video courses and things that worked for me in the classes. And um, yeah, I just, I just tried to find different ways of learning instead of reading massive books that weren't always the most interesting. Some of them are though. It's like some of the books are great, but some of them not so much. <laughs> so, you know, I, I watched some of your videos and in the videos you mentioned, you know, when you talked about coding, um, like it was important to actually kind of like write out your own code instead of like taking bits and pieces from people in uh, Google and stuff like that. Um, how would you elaborate? How would you elaborate and uh, give advice to the people out there who are going through the same kind of coursework or uh, the same career path? Yeah. Um, so my advice would be to, like I said, just like Trey said, like tr try to just make your code your own because it's, you know, I think a lot of us as programmers, we like to Google. It's a skill that we possess and uh, um, it's great. But at the same time, you want to learn how to do the things because at some point or another, you know, your goal here is probably to get a job at the end of the day. And um, more than likely, you're going to have to do some sort of technical test. You're going to have to actually be able to do the things that they're asking you to do on the job. So I highly recommend that you literally take the time to learn how these things works and it's not like like it's not always that easy for me like I said it took a little bit of time after I had learned the theoretical way of doing these things to actually in practice learn how they work you know well um so yeah it sucks <laughs> there's a learning curve um there's a there's a thing called Dunning-Kruger effect which I had mentioned I, in one of my videos before where it's like you know, you think in the very beginning, you know a whole bunch, and then you realize later on, like, and they call it the valley of despair, where you're like, I don't know anything, and this sucks. Um, and I think a lot of us go through that, especially in programming, where you, you hit that, that valley of despair, and it's just like, man, what did I get myself into? Like, this is so over my head. I don't, I don't even know what, what was my thought process here. Um, but that's just a you know it's just a moment and eventually it, it does pass and then you do learn more stuff but at least then you know you don't know everything and there's always going to be more to learn there's always going to be more to do so if you're struggling if you're just starting out just know you're probably going to struggle and feel like you're just starting out a lot of the time because it's always changing and everything and it's something that you should feel comfortable in it's a place that you should not feel is a bad place to be because that's part of what this job is and part of uh, what growing as a programmer is. It's just kind of feeling uncomfortable a little bit of the time and learning to be comfortable in that uncomfortable space. So lastly, like with WGU, right? So like in the entire process, was there anything that you found difficult or frustrating about going to WGU? Yeah, um, there are a couple of things I found difficult. However, uh, <laughs> like, They've, they've changed some of it. So WGU, thank God, is, I mean, you know, I, feel, it's, I really do feel like it is one of the most underrated colleges because they're constantly listening to feedback and they're constantly trying to improve and make the school better and more um, accessible and more, uh, you know, geared toward the actual fields that you're going into. So one of the things that I had personally run into was, like I said, having, trying to get time with your 
course instructors at the, in the coding courses when you get to those last last couple ones um, because to me they're really important for me to understand it and I think for a lot of people it's really important to understand what it is that you're doing uh, but they changed that because you know it made sense for them to want to keep their students so they made it to where you can get different instructors and you don't always have to wait for your own one um, additionally like I said I had a mentor at one point that I did not love but there's a process to get a new mentor so I, I just went through the process and got a new mentor and everything was everything was hunky-dory could you elaborate on that I mean like I myself right like I was very very fortunate I had the best mentor WGU has ever produced and I'm biased in that fact, right? But what I'm mm -hmm. saying is like, you know, I, I've seen some horror stories online or, or some people talking about, like, because you didn't, you had a mentor that you didn't jive with, right? And there was a process to uh, get assigned a new mentor. Could you elaborate on that real quick for the people who are in that situation? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, you get assigned, it's kind of just luck of a draw, I guess, the mentor that you get. And like I said, luckily, my first mentor was amazing. But when he left, um, they just just, you know, dispersed his students. So I got an interim mentor who I didn't really talk to. And then I got assigned this second mentor who we just didn't, you know, to me, we just didn't work out to her. Oh, no, maybe she thought we were BFFs. But I, I let her know because again I, I also always say just know tell people what you want like talk to people communication is key and so I let her know like hey I don't really like the way that you're doing this thing like for me that doesn't work and so we tried to kind of come to a compromise but in the end I was just I, I wasn't happy with it so if you find that you're in a place where you've you know communicated to this person and it's still not working for you um you can just call up I believe it is called the I want to say it's called like the it's like a mentor manager it's the manager of the mentors I don't I don't remember what her title was but I um called up I let them know and she she didn't respond that that same day but she had sent me an email asking for a time to talk so we had a phone conversation about why I was unhappy and um you know what I thought could be done better in the situation and after that she let me know like she thought that I would work really well with this other mentor and I said cool and so then she switched me to that guy and that guy was awesome and um you know he's super chill and and I really love the mentor that I ended with as well okay and then lastly like so how, how do you feel like you're going to like what is your plan to leverage your degree as far as like job opportunities in the future so right now my you know, I got my, so I got my degree, like I said, not necessarily thinking exactly what I was going to do in tech. Um, I, I had a couple of app ideas and things that I wanted to develop on my own. So I do, I'm definitely going to use it for that specifically, like my own things as well. But in terms of like corporate jobs and things like that, there are just so many different variations of things that you can get into. Um, and luckily, like while I was at WGU, through WGU, I got a position um, doing like teaching, it was like teaching t computer stuff to, to learners. And that was really great. I actually really enjoyed that position, but it was contract, so it ended. Um, but now I'm, uh, yeah, I'm not 100% sure. I think I'd like to do maybe developer advocate, maybe um, product management, something like that, in the, something in the IT space. Uh, I also might do complete software development. I don't know. Uh, you know, like we were talking about sometimes you have to take a bunch of technical tests, <laughs> which uh, not a huge fan of, but you, you got to do it. So, yeah, not as far as leveraging my degree. Those are kind of my options, I would think, but I definitely, like I said, I'm going to be making my own things. I might do one of those, you know, follow follow me as I start my app startup sort of things. Uh, I might do that. <laughs> hey, that's crazy that you mentioned that. So you say you actually got a job. You actually got a job through WG once you graduated. Like, I, I didn't even know that was possible. Like, could you explain that? I know I said lastly, but I, I got to hear, you know, you got to uh, spill <laughs> this tea, right? So could you please let the people out there uh, know what's going on? Yeah, definitely. So I actually got it while I was still in school. And um, so I, I, I've mentioned this on my channel maybe 
maybe like once or twice, but I get kind of cocky when I, you know, I was in that peak of the Dunning-Kruger effect. I was like, <laughs> I got this. I know everything right before the Valley of Despair. <laughs> it's like, I know everything. I'm, I'm good to go get a job now. And um, this was like right after my first term or like right before my first term was ending somewhere around there. And so I started interviewing and I was like, um, WGU has this portal called Handshake and it's just a bunch of different companies that are interested in you know soon to be grads or like recent grads and stuff like that and you can put your resume you can just fill out a, like a whole profile on there so i was on handshake and i was meeting with a couple of different companies and i met with one company um i think actually a recruiter had sent me an email in in the portal and was like, hey, you know, we're looking for people for blah, blah, blah. And I was like, hmm, seems interesting. So I, I applied and got an interview and I thought, oh, how fun, you know, like, let me, let me do this interview. And thank God it was, it was a, um, it wasn't a, like a technical quiz. It wasn't a data structures technical quiz at the time. It was a, uh, just kind of like a show me the software, like show me that you can work with this stuff and like that you can do the actual job. And I was like, cool. So I had, I had one of those interviews and it went really, really well. And so, um, got the job and I worked with them for, it was about a three, four month period. And yeah, had a lot of fun. Would, would love to do it again <laughs> if, if you're watching this. Um, so yeah. <laughs> well, that was great. So, you know, any, any of you folks that's out there watching, you know, um, Please take advantage of the uh, WGU Handshake Portal. That's it's called the W the Handshake Portal. Mm -hmm. All right, hey, the Handshake Portal. Hey, so you heard it here first because I never heard of it. <laughs> but that's great. <laughs> that's great. All right, so hey, you know, uh, could you talk to the people real quick uh, before we get out of here? You know, kind of like about your YouTube channel and social media and kind of a couple things you got going on. Yeah, definitely. I'd love to. Um, so yeah, I've got a YouTube channel called IT Girl and we talk about WGU and coding and just tech stuff in general. It's a fun time, you know, if you want to check it out. Uh, also, I've, I've got an Instagram. It it exists. <laughs> it's not it's not super active at this point. At some point or another, maybe I'll go back on it. But I don't know. I don't know how I feel about Instagram. How do you how do you feel about Instagram, Trey? Well, I'll tell you what, like, so, you know, I actually like Instagram, you know, um, like in the tech space or the professional space, you know, everyone kind of likes Twitter, but for me, it's like Twitter, you know, and I, I hate to sound like this, but to me, Twitter is just so boring, man. Like, it's just like, you know, I, I need to see somebody. I need to see how they live in, you know what I'm saying? See their mannerisms, see how they talk. That's just me, you know, old school, you know what I'm saying? But like, um, I like IG, IG is great. And, Ooh. you know, I was very biased, right? Because now I'm on, like, TikTok heavy, like, spend hours. Ooh. And then, like, because, you know, they said TikTok was, like, for young people, right? So I was like, well, okay, got it. And then once I got on there, I was like, man, they got everything on there, man. Like, I swear, all of, stuff. Like, cooking stuff and recipes. And... Oh well, all right. Uh, <laughs> hey, so, you know, Sierra, hey, we want to thank you uh, for stopping by today and, and blessing us with your experiences and stuff like that. And uh, for the viewers out there, I, I hope that everyone got something out of this today. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching us. Um, and like I said, please uh, head over to uh, Sierra's channel, IT Girl. I'm going to leave a link in the description and everything like that. And yes. then uh, tell, a Trey, <laughs> tell a Trey sent you, all right? <laughs> hey, hey, so for those, uh, you know, so hey, we appreciate you guys stopping by. It was our Thank session, you. me, Cisco Soldier, aka Uncle Trey, Sierra. See y'all.